Hey kids, my name is Leonie Tröger and I'm an international student from Germany and I'm also a member of the track and field team at the University of Cincinnati and today I want to read something for, for you and this is one of the five minute princess stories and today's story is The Little Mermaid, a special song. Let's start. Might I have your attention please? Sebastian called. The crab tapped his baton on the podium. King Triton's birthday was in a couple of days, and the court musicians were playing a special performance. Triton's daughter, Ariel, was singing while the orchestra played a brand new tune. Sebastian won, uh, wanted the concert to be spectacular, spectacular, but they still had a lot of work to do. The crab raised his baton. The musicians began to play. Beautiful music followed the sea until clang. Who did that? Sebastian demanded. Um, I did, a young mermaid named Carol. He replied correctly. The best way to play the cymbals is to hold on to them. Now, if there are no more interruptions, Sebastian said grumpily, let's continue. The rehearsal went from bad to worse. Carol dropped her cymbal a second time. Clang. Then she tripped and landed on top of the kettle drum. As everyone watched, Sebastian threw down his baton. Rehearsal is over, the crab yelled and stormed off. Ariel helped Carol up. Don't mind, Sebastian. I will never be able to get this song right, let alone perfect. Carol said sadly. Don't worry about it, Ariel said. The only thing I'm perfect at is making Sebastian mad. You should have seen his face the last time I went to the surface. You've been to the surface? Carol asked, amazed. You must be the bravest mermaid ever. It's just something I like to do. Ariel said, I'm always gathering treasures. Would you like to see my collection? I would love to, Carol exclaimed. The two mermaids swam to Ariel's grotto. Make yourself at home. Ariel told Cora when they arrived. Flounder the fish was there. He waved a fin at them. The young mermaid swam around, examining jewelry and shiny trinkets. Where did you find all these? Cora asked as she put one of the strand of pearls. I found some of them in a sunken ship, replied Ariel. You've been inside a sunken ship? Cora said with a gasp. Weren't you scared? Of course not. Where are you? Where are you, Flounder? Ariel teased. Teased. Nothing to it. The fish pipped. So what are we waiting for? Ariel asked. Let's go. Cory and Flounder trailed behind Ariel. Soon they arrived at a ship that had sunk to the ocean floor. Let's see what's in there. Ariel urged. Her friends followed her through a large portal. Inside the ship, Ariel found an old streamer trunk. Look at this, she cried, holding up a purple parasol. And this, Cory exclaimed, picking up a fancy lampshade. I wonder what it, it's for. My friend Scuttle can tell us, Ariel said. Follow me. Where are we going? Cory asked Flounder. To the third surface. He replied matter of factly. Soon the friends arrived at the third phase. Scuttle the seagull examined their treasures. That is a triple trule ripper, he said, looking at Coral's lampshade. It's what human ladies wear when they are going somewhere important. Before long the friend had to leave. At the hated home, Cora asked Ariel if she could keep the travel ruffler at the grotto. It might get broken at home, she explained. Of course, Ariel agreed. The grotto is my secret place, it, and it can be yours too. A few days later, as Ariel swam toward the grotto, she heard someone singing. The voice was strong and clear, but sweet, too. When Ariel arrived, she saw a new friend. 
Carl, I didn't know you had such a lovely voice. You should be singing the concert and playing the cymbals. The little blonde mermaid shrugged. I just like singing to myself, she explained. I've never actually performed. performed. The next day at rehearsal, Sebastian made Ariel and the orchestra practice over and over, but something always seemed to go wrong. The big day is tomorrow, the crab said, fretting. This concert needs to be fit for a king, King Threaten, to be exact. Let's try it again. So they did. The rehearsal went on on and on. By the end of the afternoon, everyone was tired. See you tomorrow, Ariel said. Her voice was gaspy. On the day of the concert, Ariel could only whisper. She had lost her voice. Luckily, she knew who would take her place. Me? Carol said when the princess asked her. But I can't. You must, Sebastian ins insisted. Otherwise, King Triton's birthday celebration will be ruined. I can't sing in front of the crowd of mere people, Carol uh, said, pleading. Sure you can, Lana said. Carl thought about how she had visited a sunk ship and gone to the surface. Things she had never thought she could do, all because of Ariel. Now her new friend was counting on her. All right, Carl said slowly, I will do it. That night when Carl peeked out from backstage, she nearly fainted. The entire kingdom was there, including her parents and her brothers and sisters. King Thrighton and Ariel sat in the royal box. When it was time, Cora took a deep breath and swam on stage. As the orchestra started playing, she sang softly, but as she went on, Cora's voice got louder. Before she knew it, she, the concert was over and the audience began to clap and cheer. Cora, said Sebastian, smiling, you can give away your symbols. From now on, you're going to be a court singer. After the show, Arya went to the congratu congratulate her friend. She found Carl with her family. I didn't know you could sing like that, one of Carl's sisters exclaimed. No one ever would have known if it wasn't for Ariel, replied Carl. She believed in me. Ariel still couldn't speak, but she gave Carl a big hug. It had been a wonderful evening. And that is the end of the story.